When someone you love dies in war, a flag-covered casket and 21-gun salute honors their sacrifice as family gathers to say goodbye. But how does it feel when you lose someone to war and don't get that chance because the person you love never comes home? This is the painful reality for the family of Arkansas native Captain William Earl Tatum. As our Cassandra Webb shows us, Earl died in the Battle of Tarawa. His body left behind as the battle raged on. After that, Captain Tatum became lost to history. But his family never forgot him, and that's why we're honoring Earl and other Arkansans who paid the ultimate price and never came home. This is the first in our series, The Lost Boys, the story of Captain William Earl Tatum. And you can see it's showing a lot of wear. Inside Sue's suitcase, the story of her Uncle Earl comes to life. You know, and I used to wonder, well, what will I do with all this stuff? A treasure trove tells the tale of a hero she never knew. Captain William Earl Tatum. I would love to have met him and known him. Sue's mother, Iva Lee, was Earl's baby sister. He and Mama were just always real close. So when he was killed in World War II and his remains never came home. You don't have any sense of closure. You don't get to see him. You don't get to say goodbye. Sue's mother was devastated. I was 11 months old when he was killed. Sue's brother, Ronald Earl Edie. I don't go by that name, but I'm proud of that name. He remembers his mama's grief. I, I think she, she and her sisters never really recovered from Earl's loss. I wish that he could have been identified in her lifetime. You know, I always wish that, but that wasn't possible. The boy from Stamps was a star football player at Henderson State. After graduation, he was a high school teacher and coach. And then he coached the the boys' football, which was right up his alley. <laughs> but then came the surprise military strike on Pearl Harbor. Just one month later, Earl enlisted in the Marines. And you can see how he matured, had the little mustache. The Henderson State football star was awarded the Silver Star for his fighting spirit at Guadalcanal. It's the third highest award for combat valor. I know he was proud. I know he didn't expect anything like that. Wounded twice, his hometown paper called him Quite a hero. 40 hours later, he was struck in the same leg with shrapnel, and he had to give up. <laughs> Some of that shrapnel is in Sue's suitcase. He and his sisters couldn't have known that just a year later, that silver star would turn to gold. Letters from his sisters came back to Arkansas, returned to sender, they said. And they were getting them back, not knowing. That Earl chose to fight in the Battle of Tarawa. He had been placed on essentially desk duty. Um, and volunteered. He was on the ship. He went. That battle lasted three days. The goal was to seize the island from the Japanese. We did it, but at a huge cost. In uh, this uh, purple heart with the gold star on it. A letter from a friend told the sisters of their big brother's sacrifice killed by enemy gunfire. Earl was getting out of the landing boat. There was no suffering. He was killed instantly. I've never been in combat. I, I do uh, understand that the focus is on your buddies. And I'm confident that's why he did it. At Tarawa, about 1,100 U.S. Marines and sailors died. Most of the bodies were moved to hasty graves. It was a ferocious battle. It was just really hard to identify and keep up with people. Eventually, some of those remains were recovered and taken to Hawaii. And to this day, more than 400 men from that battle are still unaccounted for, including Captain Tatum. Only time and DNA will track down Earl's remains. Sue submitted her DNA sample to the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency nearly a decade ago. I was really excited about hearing something. That DNA waits on a match to remains that sit in rows of boxes in a lab in Hawaii. And there's no way of knowing yet if Earl's remains are even there. Of course, you wish they could do more and they could automatically go in there with a new DNA test on that bone and, and say that was... Captain William Earl Tatum. As time passes, the family loses hope they'll see Earl's remains come home. I really have doubts that that will happen. Uh, that they might stumble on it. I don't think that they could identify him, but I, it's possible. Until then, Captain Tatum is remembered at a memorial in Honolulu. And the servicemen and women 
who were killed in the Pacific have a monument. His name is there on, on a plaque. It made it real, you know, and uh, that uh, he was acknowledged, that other others were aware of what he had done. So what happens when a silver star turns to gold and never comes home? Maybe it becomes a North Star, like it did for the family, who petitioned to God in a poem they wrote, keep us sisters so close to you that we shall live a life worthy of him. And someday soon, we shall be forever with this gold star, our brother. Sue recalls a childhood memory. Being out in the yard playing, and I thought, what if Uncle Earl just walked up in our front yard one day? Wouldn't my mother be happy? I'd love to have seen her rejoice. Until her uncle's remains come home, he remains a beautiful memory tucked away in Sue's suitcase. If you've lost a loved one whose remains still haven't come home from war, we'd love to hear from you and share your story. You can find out how to contact us by finding Earl's story on our website, kark.com.